Hey, what's up guys? Beast Armada here, and I got you some more Call of Duty Ghost gameplay. I decided to upload this again, and this is actually a pretty good game. It's pretty close, you guys will see what happens at the end, but it's a Curse of the Green Triangle, so you can kind of predict the future, and the outcome of the video. It's not so good for me, but uh, I got quite a bit of kills. I picked up quite a bit of kills, quite a bit of deaths. This is kill confirmed, and it, you'll see I do get quite a bit of confirms, and a lot of them I missed. Uh, and I'll get into that later on in the video, but a lot of uh, tags I missed, and for the simple reason that uh, I just couldn't get to them, honestly. But I'll get into that in the later part of this video. So if you look at the title of this video, no, I'm not quitting shooters, for one. I don't want to clear that up before anybody gets any misconceptions. I'm not actually going to quit, you know, playing shooters. But I figured it was an interesting topic to discuss, because a lot of people seem to be uh, not so encouraged to play shooters, really. I mean, they're just kind of... Uh, and I get outplayed right here. My aim was off. I'm not going to lie about that. My aim was off pretty bad. He had that Bison. I think this is post patch too. So the SMG's got a buff. Pretty much all of them did. So the Bison SMG's pretty beast now, I heard. So I'm about to give that a try. But uh, it seems like a lot of people just aren't into FPSs. A lot of people say, you know, um, we'll just take a quick example, take a quick look at them. So Titanfall. Um, I'll get into that too. I'll make another uh, video about Titanfall. But. It was one of the, in my opinion, quickest FPSs or even quickest video games to die on YouTube. Maybe not necessarily die as a whole, but die on YouTube wise. Yeah, it died pretty quick. It died faster than Ghost did, honestly. I mean, Ghost isn't even fully dead. I know uh, it's not as good as it used to be as far as views go, but it is still alive. There's still people uploading it. There's people playing uh, public matches. There's people playing, uh, I guess it's, um, it's like a league play version of that. I don't remember what it's called. I guess it's kind of like competitive play somewhat or whatever where you play against uh, more competitive teams. It's kind of like Clan Wars or whatever. I don't know what it's called because I never really got into it or I was never really that interested in competitive. That's a nice little wall bang I shot him through the door. That just goes to show how fast you die in this game. I mean, it's not like Black Ops 2 where everything's made of paper mache or bisquick where the walls are made of graham cracker and stuff like that. You literally just die so fast. I know people are going to argue. You know, I've talked about people in the comments section. I've talked to people about this as well. Uh, people say... You don't die faster. It's a hit detection where you, you know, don't die faster. Your bullets do more damage. The concept is you drop faster. I don't like that. And the reason why I don't like that is because I feel like it leads to less skill because even a bad player can drop a good player in a very short time frame and the good player doesn't have any time to react. That was a quick example of how fast you die. I got two shot by, uh, I think an R5. I'm pretty sure that was an R5. Hit me with like two bullets and the other one was a headshot. So I died instantly pretty much. Uh, but this is going back to where I couldn't collect the tags. You saw there was another instance where that dude just popped out of nowhere. What is with everyone where they always seem to be holding each other's hands? I don't know about y'all, but every time I play Call of Duty Ghost, this is one of the biggest Call of Duty's I've noticed. Is it seems like whenever you kill two or three guys, there's like three or four more waiting to respawn or waiting right there. I think that was what uh, you know I had a lot to say with the spawns. I think it has a lot to do with the spawns. It's like a revenge spawn system. I was about to kill that guy, and then another dude respawned right there. He literally respawned around the corner. These spawns, man, they are awful. And I'm not going to sit here and rant about the spawns, but these are the worst I've ever seen these spawns. I mean, it's basically got Modern Warfare 3 free-for-all spawns in every game mode. Even Domination, where the spawns are supposed to be predictable, where uh, one enemy team has a certain flag, you're supposed to predictably spawn there. Look at all these guys just spawning around me. It's insane. And uh, I think actually I spawned back there, but that just goes to show you the spawns are whack. You see my team's on the other side, and I end up spawning by the enemy, so I don't know what is up with the spawn mechanics and system. They really need to go back and revamp that in the future Call of Duties if this series is to uh, flourish and become a better series as a whole. I mean, I know a lot of people are still going to buy it no matter what. I mean, honestly, here's my take on the next Call of Duty. I think Sledgehammer deserves a chance, but I'm still on the fence about buying it. I know a lot of people say they're never going to buy it and they end up buying it or whatever. I don't know. I really don't know. For one, I don't really have the money to buy it. And, uh, you know, I'll just see later on in the future if I might. I might buy it. I might just give the Sledgehammer a chance. I might give them a benefit of the doubt. But again, I just want to see what the multiplayer trailer is like just to kind of see what some of the weapons may be in the game. If I see anything that looks ridiculously stupid, I'm not even going to give the game a chance. I really don't even want to give the game a chance because they should have learned a long time ago what works and what doesn't work and what really annoys the community. And that ties into the title of this video. I know it seems kind of like I've been rambling on about random things, but it all ties in. It's a bunch of little things that add up to one big thing. What if I stopped you know, playing FPS shooters? The biggest thing is the community. This community 
specifically the Call of Duty community, but just as a whole, the FPS community, it seems like it's going really downhill, and it's unfortunate to say, honestly. It, uh, you know, I started playing FPSs a long time ago, pretty much as soon as I could hold a controller. You know, I've been playing FPSs for a long time, first-person shooters, uh, shooters of any kind, really, but first-person shooters has been my main genre for the past few years. I have uh, dabbled in some Gears of War and even some other third-person shooters. Look at this dude with the riot shield, man. I think that's the support jug. I'm not even sure if that's a real person. I don't even know anything about the support jug. It's pretty annoying, man. The whole support package as a whole just needs to go. They cannot ever balance them. They always put stupid things in it that annoy me. And, uh, you know, obviously some people might find them useful, but I really don't care. I think the support package has never been balanced ever since they put it in Modern Warfare 3. Uh, the Oracle, as you guys know, I hate that thing. I think it's absolutely overpowered. There's nothing that counters it. You don't have a perk to counter it. I don't know why they would give you a free wall hack. That's essentially what it is. You got free wall hacks. You know where they're at on the other side of a wall or a surface from a long distance. And you get, I think, 14 points. It's not even necessarily 14 kills, but just 14 points added up. And you get caught in it. It only lasts so long. It's like a UAV way, but still it's the fact that you put stupid things like that in the game that really tick players off. And I just, I don't get it. I really can't comprehend their logic. I think they think that they're being innovative, but it, it honestly isn't. They're not being innovative at all. They're just being stupid. They're being mindless, and they're not thinking. The biggest way to fail at making a great game is to not think. If you overthink also, that is also a thing that will cause, uh, you know, failure in your game. Here's another support recon joke. Look at all the stuff I was going against. People with ballistic vests, people with dogs. It was a brutal match, guys. <laughs> this game was rough. Like I said, it's a very close game. And it was rough. I was playing against a bunch of support runners, man. That's the problem with support runners. If you're versing a team with like three or four people using it, it is rough. But back to what I was saying about the FPS community. I'm still going to play FPSs, but I would really like to see some uh, competitive FPSs, some FPSs that get me addicted and make me want to continue to come back and play them over and over again and make me actually look forward to playing them because as it stands right now, there's not really an FPS that I just have to play that I cannot just put down. Yes, I love Titanfall. It's a fantastic game. Yes, I love Battlefield. It's a fantastic game. Yes, I even love Call of Duty Ghost at times when it plays right. That's probably like 5% of the time, but, you know, it's it's the fact that I still love it. It's Call of Duty. I love it at times, though. It's not like my favorite game. It's not even close. But it's the fact that I think we need competitive FPSs in this genre because right now this genre is not doing so good. I would love to be in the position to make a video game or even make some of the decisions to make a video game because I think that my game would be awesome. I think that any game that I could put my ideas towards could be a lot of fun for everyone, not just the good or the bad players, but just everyone as a whole. Even people that just want to goof off and have a good time. I want it to be fun for everybody. That would be the goal if I did make my own game. But feel free to leave your opinions down in the comment section on what you guys think about this whole topic at hand. But you guys, of course, have an awesome day, and I'll see you in the next one.